the plan is not to die. And that was a sufficient kick up the bum to get it done. Have you ever looked out the window and thought, doesn't look like it's going very well out there? Uh, me too. Uh, I feel like I've been doing that since about 2016, which is arguably when the world started getting a very black mirror and even more weird than it already was. Or perhaps it's been like that all along and I just started becoming an older adult and started noticing. Either way, things were, and I think inarguably, magnified in 2020 when a lot of the structures that held up my life, the invisible givens, the backdrop, of my day-to-day -day that I never really think about were taken away. Stuff like I realised that it was possible for supermarket shelves to be empty, that my local GP couldn't pick up the phone. And all of a sudden I started regretting my it can't happen here mentality, something that on reflection I think is a little bit pig-headed of me to have felt. And while I'm somebody who was living in very temporary accommodation a lot of the times, I moved almost every year while I was in London, I didn't have much storage space. I always thought maybe I should have a grab bag. A grab bag is kind of an emergency bag that you'd grab when you know you have to leave your home unexpectedly uh, and it's supposed to like prepare you for the outside world. A little bit tinfoil hatty to some people, maybe a little bit preppy, but in the cold harsh light of 2022, I've started seriously considering putting one together. Maybe because one day in the future it will become useful, or maybe just so when I have those cold sweat imaginary scenarios running through my head at 2 a.m., I have already in my logical calm awake brain thought through all of those scenarios and can talk my panicky sleep deprived self through the motions. First, I went to my well-trodden well of wisdom, my gumption club, the patrons that make this channel possible, and I asked them, do you have a grab bag? And perhaps relevant, where are you from? Now I got responses from people all over the world from lots of different countries, climates and situations. And some of the trends that I started to notice were perhaps obvious and some of them a little bit more unexpected. Now perhaps predictably the pattern was people in the UK tended to not unsurprising, I guess, more of an attitude thing than a reality like that our climate never fails us or never will. But perhaps more obviously people who lived in places that were vulnerable to things like earthquakes, blizzards, wildfires, did more often not always but more often i learned that people in northwest iceland had to be ready for avalanches and there were people who lived in places like lithuania that didn't have them but since the war on ukraine have started getting them members from norway and sweden told me they had one because their government told them to literally they said they had to have equipment and provisions to stay inside their house without running water or electricity for at least three days and I pulled up the government information on it as well. It was, it was fascinating. Like I said, in the UK we have a relatively mild climate for now, uh, but we all often do have floods. Um, there obviously is the risk of fire and there were a few people that actually did live in the UK who mentioned why they had grab bags. Um, a few exceptions were people who lived in areas in London that had previously had pretty bad riots and also pre people who had previously lived in rural areas, even if they didn't now, were just more prepared in general. They were used to not having everything within a 10 minute walk of them. A few people shared what they had in their grab bags, which was really fascinating for my nosy what's in your bag brain, if nothing else. Um, but I sorted those into three categories. Um, people who had hospital grab bags for medical emergencies, those were less first aid kits and compasses and more clean undies, something to read, toothbrush, nice pyjamas. <laughs> Particularly for people who had sick or elderly relatives or people with underlying health conditions, that makes sense. And also the mums. The mums, of course, <laughs> were the most prepared. Um, one said they kind of had something like a grab bag with them at all times full of nappies and snacks. The second category was unexpected situations that aren't emergencies. So people often had a small bag in their house that had their essential pills and potions, plasters, hand gel, wipes, power bank, that kind of thing, but nothing that would actually count as like a survival tool. And then the third category were people that had real emergency kits. I'm talking distilled water, sleeping bags, 
wind up radios. One person who lived in Hong Kong had a quarantine grab bag specifically for that because they said that during COVID there was a real possibility that if you're in close contact, you would have to be taken to a government quarantine for 21 days. I was a contact of a contact and I had to go in for three days. So I have a plastic box with bedding, towels, cutlery, mugs, tea bags, snacks, crafts and a couple of books. I was also interested in why people didn't have grab bags. Of course, I don't have one and I could probably work out the reasons why I don't, but it was interesting to hear from other people. There were a lot of things around expense in general, which makes sense, keeping them up to date with expiry and also just the worry of admin around it, making sure you're on top of keeping those things fresh. And then lastly, just this kind of like subconscious denial about it. I thought this comment was really, really interesting. It's like a subconscious thing. Like if I don't have one, it's somehow magically going to make me not need to have it. It definitely has something to do with denial and it's more like a philosophy, like hope or wishful thinking, especially because I live right next to UA in Slovakia. And I think that was a really interesting point that actually maybe a lot of us aren't making any emergency provisions because it, to make them would it, would admit that our lives aren't always permanent, that unexpected things can happen, that we could be evicted from the very meticulous and cosy and well orchestrated lives within our homes that we have got so used to. And that was a sufficient kick up the bum to get it done. Get it done, eat that shit. So I'm gonna take you with me today and we're going to make a grab bag. Okay, I've done some research and we need to chat about it. Let me put the kettle on. You can tell I've done my research because I'm wearing my Steve Jobs top. How anyone finds out anything whilst not wearing a black turtleneck, I don't know. <laughs> I've got this tea called Campfires and Vampires, which I think is probably quite appropriate for an apocalypse video. The world might be ending, but at least we've got some on-theme tea. Mm. So, turns out, surprisingly slash unsurprisingly, depending on how you vote, the government website was not very helpful. <laughs> at least the British one, anyway. The Met Office website kind of just had like a flood list and it only had eight things on that list which now I've done all my other research seems a little puny. <laughs> Shot fired in the Met Office, who is next? No one is safe from Lena's wrath. But I did go on other people's government websites and those were much more helpful. British Columbia, shout out to you. Canadians know what's up, I guess. Sweden, Norway, parts of the US, all very useful lists. I also looked at the Red Cross list and also this website who does like industrial NHS and army grade style emergency stuff. I may have even ordered some things from that website because. <laughs> but they're called EVAQ8 and they have like a whole emergency plan that you can build as well as like a kit list. And they sell ready-made grab bags, which uh, 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 I'm a self-made woman. I'm gonna make it myself, but it's good to know that if I did wanna splash some cash, I could just buy a ready-made grab bag. What a weird thing to put on a Christmas list, but I am tempted. Anyway, there were also some instructional videos on YouTube, some weirder than others. The bug out community on YouTube is, I fear veering into the right-wing prepper Trump vicinity. So after a little bit of time hanging out there, I thought, these aren't my people. I'm going back to the Red Cross. But I did want to chat you through four interesting things I learned while researching. Because I'll be honest, when I entered the research phase of this video, I was like, I mean, I'm going to be able to guess most of the stuff on the list. I know what my essentials are. I've been to a festival. But no, there was actually loads that had never occurred to me. Also, for those of you worried about me in the last video, not to flex, but... <laughs> Lena's going to Sainsbury's today. Anyway. <laughs> Back to emergency planning. Lights. Now, I thought the kind of most reliable thing would be candles. Like, that's what you see in films. People always have candles on them in emergency. It's a thing. However, no, many people <laughs> pointed out that candles are bad because if there's a gas leak, which there might be in an emergency, candles, to put it lightly, will probably seal your fate. Also, if you are gonna get a torch, apparently LED ones are preferable. And also the type of battery you get is important. An alkaline battery only lasts five years. So if you're putting it in your bug bag, your grab bag, um, you need to replace it every five years. Seems a little bit wasteful. But if you get lithium batteries, they'll perform even when they're stored over like a 10 year or more period. What? And also somebody made the point that if you're gonna do a thorough prep bag, having a head torch as well as a handheld torch 
is really, really useful because in an emergency, you're probably gonna be active and trying to do things or build things or sort things out or rescue people. So um, you might need your hands free. Another thing I didn't think about was respirator masks. Like obviously the pandemic was kind of an emergency and we all needed and still need sometimes masks. However, I didn't really think about putting it in my emergency bag, but a really good point, and actually something that happened near where somewhere I used to live, is that there can be like a, emergencies like explosions, especially from factories and things. There was a point in an old neighbourhood I used to live in where we were told not to go outside for 12 hours because a factory had blown up and there was loads of like dodgy shit in the air. So ideally you need an FFP3 or an N99 or an FFP2 <laughs> mask. Or like maybe a few if you want to save the people that you live with, I guess. As one of my sources very well pointed out, you can survive for several days without water, several weeks without food, but you can only survive a few minutes without air. So maybe the most important thing in the grab bag, which is something I didn't even think about putting in at the beginning of this project. Now, when I was looking at these kind of emergency websites where you can buy stuff, I realized there was quite a few USB chargers, like power banks for your phone which is an obvious thing. Like I carry those around with me when I'm going out for more than five hours. Like that's not a thing. However, I noticed that quite a lot of them were USB chargers that you actually put AA batteries in the back of. You don't like charge them from a mains. And I was like, why is that? That's like seems annoying. But then I realized actually, if it's not just your house that's in an emergency, but your whole street or your whole town, um, it's probably easier to get hold of AA batteries or hold more AA batteries in your bag than it is to find a working power outlet. Like if you try to find a working power outlet at a festival, imagine that situation on crack. Like it would obviously be much better to get an AA battery powered thing to charge your phone with or a solar paneled one, which I looked at as well. They're quite expensive. I might save for one. And the last one, shoes. <laughs> bear with, bear with. I didn't really think about packing shoes because I thought in an emergency, I'll obviously be wearing my shoes. However, if you have to evacuate from somewhere really, really fast, be honest with yourself. Do you keep your sturdiest, most reliable, most apocalypse proof shoes by the door? Or do you keep your flimsy trainers or your flip flops by the door? Because the second one's me and in an emergency, I don't know if I'm gonna dig out my old hiking boots. Like that might not be the priority in my scatty panicking brain. So actually I've decided I am gonna put my old walking boots and some extra shoelaces in my pack because imagine evacuating your house and then realizing you're just in your socks. <laughs> not funny, devastating, funny. No, let's avoid it. Research done, we're on to the gathering segment of this project, let's go. So before I went out and spent any money, I wanted to have a little haul from around the house to see what I could find. And I'm quite impressed, this is quite a lot here. I've got my old walking boots, a mirror for signaling for help, and lots of other things that I'm gonna chat you through. However, first, I had to show you the toilet paper that I'm putting in, because to be frank, no wiped bums drawing an apocalypse is not a phrase I wanna have to use. So let's talk for a second about who gives a crap. Let's roll. You are about to see a whole box of who gives a crap toilet paper fly past your eyes while I chat to you about them. I have been a customer of Who Gives a Crap, giving them my own money for about five years. And you've probably heard me chat about them on the channel before because I honestly rave about them all the time. They are an eco-friendly toilet paper company that send it straight to your door in a massive box with carbon neutral delivery. They give 50% of their profits to charity in the hopes that one day everybody in the world is gonna be able to live with a toilet and clean water. It's the bare min, guys, it's the bare min. They're B Corp certified. They actually do give a crap about the world. They wrap their toilet paper in this beautiful packaging. I've actually wrapped presents in this stuff and given it to people for their birthdays, no shame. I've also sent people boxes of this stuff as housewarming presents thumb warming presents, you name it. I was so bored during lockdown that I decided to test their claim that their toilet paper is actually longer than everybody else's and therefore really good value. And it's true, look at these pictures, I did the research. They're right, it's 23p per 100 sheets, which if you do your maths is actually a bloody bargain. If you would like to try a box for yourself, you can get the code in the description, Lena Norms, five pounds off the box, what is not to like? Thank you so much to Who Gives a Crap for sponsoring this video and giving me great toilet paper on my bum for five whole years. I guess it's getting serious. 
So now we have given a crap, it's time to go out and see what else I can add to this pile and put in my emergency kit. So I have got everything that I want to put in my grab bag so far on this table and I'm going to chat you through everything that I have so far and then we're going to pack it together. <clears throat> okay, are you ready? So I have some quick dry synthetic leggings that are really, really warm. I have one head torch, as discovered, kind of important. I have my pair of really old but very, very sturdy walking boots that I honestly don't wear much in the day-to-day -day life, but it's good that they're gonna maybe have a use. <laughs> maybe they won't. Please let there not be a use for these shoes, but they're going in anyway. A very old multi-tool I got from Paris a long time ago. It's got a screwdriver, it's got a spoon. I've got this torch, this is a new purchase. This was three pounds and and it is a handheld torch that works kinetically so you just charge it like this it doesn't have any bulbs and it doesn't need any electricity to work we've got some good old gaffer tape i thought i'd get the red color because it seemed like an emergency we've got my toiletry bag over here this is again an old toiletry bag that maybe in another life i would have thrown into landfill but instead it's going to be tucked in here inside my very sparse <laughs> toiletry bag at the moment i've got some sun cream because god knows we don't need burns on a burning planet i've got some natural deodorant i have got an old toothbrush that again i would have thrown away but i think in the event of an emergency i won't mind that it's an old toothbrush and uh where's it gone ah yes a moon cup because i'm assuming that if the world is falling apart i won't be able to get my implant <laughs> renewed so i might need this good <laughs> I don't know if this is cheering me up or making me even more scared. Anyway, next we've got two pairs of old socks that again, I don't use a lot because they're really old and worn, but in that kind of emergency situ situation, they would be very, very useful. I have got a little handheld mirror that I got in a stocking years and years ago. It's got some sheep on it. It says, I love you. Um, so that's gonna cheer me up and also help me signal for help. Who knows? What, what am I doing? We've got some survival cereal bars. I can't tell you how long I spent in the supermarket going through and looking for the bars at the back of the shelves that had the longest shelf life. The longest shelf life I could find was 2024, but if you can find better than that, I'll be very, very impressed. We've got a first aid kit that has loads of stuff in it that again, I got online. It's a bit shoddy that I don't actually own a first aid kit, so this will also act as my house first aid kit and I'll go into it if I need it in real life as well. And I also bought two foil blankets these were only two pounds each. They could potentially save your life. And I, I got two because I thought I'd quite like to save Craig's life as well. Just, just thinking of him, just thinking of him. I find that he'll be useful. He's six foot four. <laughs> he, could come, he could come in handy, who, who knows? Who gives a crap? We know why they're here. Love it, gonna wipe my bum in the apocalypse. And I'm gonna need some rubbish bags so I don't litter while I do that. So these are just some old plastic bags that the supermarket gave me that I did not want or ask for, but they live on in here. These are my two purchases from Boots. You can get these from any Boots. Who knew? I've got some rehydration tablets that like, if you become really dehydrated, you pop them in, they make you feel better. Uh, and also some water, water, pure, water purification tablets. Try and say that three times fast. Um, so that you don't need to carry loads and loads of water with you. You can gather water on the way. On the way to where is the question, Nina? Higher ground, <laughs> safer lands. Amarillo. But yeah, you can pop these in any water that you can find and it will make it pure and safe to drink. That's reassuring. I also have a very old beaten up water bottle that I will be grateful for. It's not one that I use every day, so happy to have it in there. This is my very exciting, possibly the most expensive thing that I got for this. But I also think that I might use it when I'm camping this year. Oh, the sun is blinding me. Not yet. I haven't got time to be raptured. Jeez. This is a combination of two bits of advice I had. One was to have one of these, this solar shower thing, but also a water bladder of some kind so you can carry huge amounts of water. So this is a solar shower that also like doubles as a water bladder. So it's pretty huge. It's got a stopper here. You fold it up and the idea is you put this in the sun, you fill it with water, you put it in the sun and it will heat to various different temperatures. You can hang it from a tree or somewhere high up and you can have a little shower with it. 
How exciting. But yeah, if I just needed to carry water in general, then it would be useful for that as well, which is why I got it. And quite honestly, I'm going to Latitude Festival this year, and I've heard about the shower queues. So it may not take an apocalypse for me to use that. I might just use that in my everyday life. Over here, we've got a lighter. I just had one of these around the house. That's fine, we'll put that in. Again, we learned maybe matches aren't the best idea, or candles. This again is another multi-tool that I found online that looks really, really useful. It's kind of like a credit card and it has a little saw on the end. What else has it got on it? A can opener, a knife edge, a screwdriver, a ruler, a, cab a cap opener, a four position wrench, a butterfly wrench, a saw blade, a direction ancillary ind indication. Oh, like a compass. Okay, I get it. A two position wrench and a lanyard hole for putting on your key ring. Good. <laughs> Don't even know what half of those are for. Really hope I'm never in a situation where I have to find out. <laughs> I've got a power bank. I found one actually in Boots for £6.50 that I'm gonna charge up. So that's good for phone charging. What else have we got? Ah yes, passport. I had to choose between the two passports because I'm one of those wankers that does have two. Uh, but I thought as I'm probably gonna be landlocked, the UK one will probably be the most useful. I also got one of these watertight bags that keep things safe and watertight. So I'm gonna be putting my passport in there any other documents i can think of but at the moment to be honest i, I can't really think of any <laughs> then i also have a notepad and paper it occurred to me that i actually have a couple of and i know that a lot of you do as well come on admit it unused diaries that have specific dates on them so you can't like reuse them for the next year or whatever i started i got to the january the 21st and then i stopped using it so I've popped this in here because it doesn't have any other use in my day-to-day -day life, but it's pretty sturdy and I didn't want to get rid of it. And I've popped in a very sturdy biro as well. I did almost put an ink pen in because that's most of the pens that I use, but then I thought biro actually waterproof doesn't smudge, probably better in emergency situations. I also have a tiny, tiny little, tiny little sewing kit. So cute. I just had this in the house anyway, to be honest, because what can I say? I used to be a brownie guide, unprepared. <laughs> so that's going in there. Hand sanitizer, because God knows knows I have some spares of these since 2020. And then two wild cards that weren't on any of the lists but I thought might be useful is one, a pack of playing cards because they're universal. People use them in loads of different, like whatever language you speak, you can use them. They're distracting and who knows where I'll be hiding and if I'll be bored. And then also just, just for the sake of hope, for the sake of gosh darn sickly optimism, I'm packing a, a book of poems, poems for love. If the shit hits the fan, who doesn't want a bit of Walt Whitman in their life? So I'm popping that in there as well, in good faith. And then it's all going in this very exciting rucksack. I got secondhand from a charity shop. It was six pounds and 99 pence. And it seems pretty new actually, so that's exciting. It's only 24 liters I think, and the recommended was 40 liters, but Look, I'm, I'm beginning here, I'm not perfect. It's more than I had yesterday. Um, so I'm gonna pack everything in here and then we're just gonna have a little wrap up chat about how I feel about this process, whether it was worth it and it, what, if anything, we can learn. Well, <laughs> this was a weird video, although perhaps I have lost sight of what a weird video even is on this channel since we did that poetry based on stock footage stuff. But this has been a really interesting video and I think I have learned a lot despite the strange premise I came up with for myself. I think it definitely helped me think through what my basic needs are, how I would meet them should I need to. Perhaps some people might look at the country that I live in and where I live and think, Lena, there's, there's no point in you making a bug bag, you're fine. But honestly to those people I'd say, have you been reading the news? <laughs> and also even if I am like technically in a bit of land that is safer, there are definitely still immediate vulnerabilities like flooding and factories blowing up, that kind of thing. And also I'd say that this exercise has also helped me realize how lucky I am to not have had to think about this before and how few of my basic needs I can fit in a little rucksack like this and how many of my basic needs are linked to everybody else's. I've been reading this book, you knew that line was coming at some point. You thought you were gonna get away with the end of this video without getting a book recommendation? I don't think so. <laughs> um, I've been reading this book, Notes from an Apocalypse by Mark O'Connell. I'm about 50 pages of the way through yet, so I'm enjoying it so far. But he makes a really good observation about the prepper community online. He compares their hauls to like beauty hauls or what's in my bag hauls. There is a certain aspect of consumerism, I think, to people paying large amounts of money and over 
overly prepping for stuff and I do think that that obviously like everything in this world has a little has a little cubby hole a little creep hole through which capitalism has climbed so I wanted to be aware of that when buying the stuff that I did I didn't buy everything on my list just because I feel like it's something that I can build up gradually I want to do more research and work out whether I need it some aspects of my pack is stuff that I gathered from around the house stuff I already had the rucksack itself was second hand and in total everything that I spent including the bag was 52 pounds that breaks down like this if you're interested but nothing was over 10 pounds a lot of things were under three pounds and while that's not really what I planned <laughs> to spend I suppose quite a few of those bits I know that I will use um, during the at least two if not three cramp camping trips I have planned this year and if you were interested in making a grab bag like mine you wouldn't have to do it for a video deadline you could do it over several months and just collect things as you go so in that ways I don't think that the cost was too bad what I was a bit sad about was how many things weren't available not wrapped in plastic packaging which feels a little bit redundant when the whole point of this is around ecological collapse so that was a frustrating thing as a customer but at the same time I feel a little bit about some of the stuff in this pack in the way I feel about PPE and stuff used during healthcare and, and the pandemic when it comes to plastic and saving actual human lives I'm not so worried about that plastic use versus wrapping our food in plastic, embedding unnecessary plastic into our clothes, that kind of thing. But I wanted to leave you with two little thoughts from this very interesting book. Mark O'Connell is quite critical of some of the areas of particularly American prepper culture and he observes that they are uniformly obsessed with purifying their lives of dependence on others which again I find really chilling and when I think about prepping, preparing, having a grab bag as a community I wonder how that looks how do we extrapolate the symbolic stuff in this bag and make it something more community wide so it's not up to everybody to have a bloody rucksack and under them <laughs> under their stairs and then the other part that really interested me was he said to be a prepper was to do everything one could do to avoid being one of the sufferers oneself while contributing nothing nothing to the prevention or the alleviation of suffering in others and again I think that's a reminder that if we are to prep a personal bag like this for our house we can't do that without also thinking about preventative measures more community measures um things that will stop me ever having to potentially use this in the same way that if you get life insurance you don't get particularly excited excited would be the wrong word if you got a really good deal on a life insurance package because the plan is to never have to use it the plan is not to die the feeling of making this grab bag filled me with a similar kind of like huh well, I guess that's a bit of a weight off my mind, but it isn't something that excites me, nor should it, <laughs> I don't think. Do you have a grab bag at home? I would be fascinated to know, and especially what country you're in, what situation you're in, and what inspired you to build one if you do have one. If you don't have one, I want to know why as well. I'm incredibly nosy. Thank you so much to Who Gives a Crap for sponsoring this video. Toilet paper is something that I will need in times of calm and times of emergency, and their model for working is a small part of a big solution of us all moving towards more conscious ways of buying and respecting the companies that respect us. This video has been part of a series on my channel called Positive Panic. Would you like to watch some more? They're cheerful, I promise. They're right here. This video has been made possible by The Gumption Club, who tip me per video so I can keep giving out these freaking videos for free. So thank you so much to them. If you're interested in joining The Gumption Club, it's below. Frog Snog, out.